Greetings, Nathan Adlin here from Autoblog. These two vehicles were recently debuted at the 2024 CES in Las Vegas, Nevada. What you're looking at over here is the Honda Zero Saloon concept, and over here, the Honda Zero SUV. Both of these vehicles are heading towards production, though not exactly the way they look now. They will look very similar, and they represent the future for Honda EV. So in this video, what we're going to do is take a look around both vehicles, look at their design. We're gonna check out their interior. We're gonna talk about Asimo, their infotainment slash intelligent car system, and about the future of Honda EVs. There's a lot to unpack with the Honda Zero Saloon in terms of its overall futuristic design. But one thing I wanted to point out were these headlights because they open and close with a shield. This is a hark back to the 1980s and 70s and 60s. Well, you could go back quite a ways in terms of vehicles that have these headlights that can pop up, flip over, or in this case, reveal themselves. Starting from the front end of the Honda Zero Saloon, you can clearly see the way they used LED lighting in conjunction with unique plastics to make these three stripes going along the front on both sides. And you can see inlets on both sides over there. Don't know if they're functional, but they sure look it. Then of course you have the illuminated Honda badge and it's quite large actually. Moving on to the side, I wanted to show you this. This definitely has almost a Lamborghini feel to it, doesn't it? Then of course you have these marker lights on the side as well. And I believe this the sections here do double for marker lights and signals right here. Well, that is a camera, but it could be a mirror. It is functional by the way. And in Japan and Europe, these are legal and they have a screen right inside the vehicle, which I'll show you in a minute. Very long vehicle. I'd say the wheelbase is just about the same length as an S-Class, that's my guess. Back here, you have a very unique design showing depth inside. This whole area here actually can turn into brake light or turn signals on either side. It's all here in this one section, including that floating Honda part. The vehicle shuts off, everything turns black. Eventually, there will be a hatch of some sort or an opening here for cargo, but on this concept, it's not here. Yeah, these wheels are extraordinarily large. Yeah, it's interesting, 22 inch wheels, huge. And notice, by the way, how this area here blisters outward. Well, from back here, the car actually comes inward. So it pulls back towards a teardrop shape to the rear. It's very similar with the SUV. Now, currently in the concept, these doors are automated, meaning that there's actually an electric motor that will open and close them for you. And you'll notice that there's no controls currently on this door panel. One interesting note, this area here, this is plush. So when the door closes, You'll see here how there's this spot. Well, it molds, look over there, next to the seat. So it kind of gives an extra seating surface and a great place to put your arm. On the inside, you have a steering yoke and then you have your screens. Remember I was telling you about the side view mirrors? Well, that'd be one of them. And the other one is over there. Then you have these large screens in the middle and the Asimo system will work with you to enhance your mood or to help your mood when you're in the vehicle. Not to mention the fact that it'll figure out what type of music you might want to listen to and other things you may need. Now, this vehicle, if you look up here, that is a digital rear view mirror. Uh, Honda's been using it or has used it before. And the reason they need it is because you cannot see out of the back of this. 
in these massive back seats, but no rear glass. But these digital rear view mirrors work quite well. You can see an additional line here, character line going throughout. In addition to one up here. This fixed glass, they are looking to bring it to production. Whether or not it has an opaque window dimmer or a slide or a curtain or something, well, that remains to be seen. Even though this car is going into production, what you're looking at here, some of it won't. Steering yoke, that could go into production, frankly. It does have spots for buttons as well. Very comfortable front seats, by the way. Large, too, which is sort of unusual for Honda products I've tested in the past. These are huge back here. Lots of extra legroom. It is a tight fit if you're super tall, but once you're back here, you can lean back, and these seats are just tremendous. Moving on to the Honda Zero SUV. Wanted to start with its exterior design on the outside. The actual front end, all of this, just like these LEDs here, stretches all the way across. And they can do some cool little dancing and whatnot, but they also work as turn signals in the front. And just like the saloon, you have the large Honda emblem. Very few wasted lines. They do have this lower section, which I'm thinking might actually be functional for cooling. Okay, this is how you do it. It's pretty nifty. You get it with the zero and the zero. Now there is storage here. These fold up and close. They could also be tables. Honda loves tables. She have a very flat floor. And the overall opening in here, I would say is about the size of the Honda HRV. But then when you move forward, this is a 60-40 split bench and they fold down. It definitely opens up to what I would say is more of like a CRV, even bigger perhaps in terms of internal capacity. No numbers have been released on these vehicles. So I can't tell you how much it can hold yet. Very clean design. And unlike the saloon, this rear glass is functional. It is actual glass. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of tech we didn't get a chance to cover, including level three autonomous driving, which is what Honda is aiming for on both of these vehicles. In the near future, you're going to be seeing the SUV go into production first, followed by the saloon and other vehicles. The way they're trying to do the production plant in Ohio is have a line where they'll be able to build EVs, ICE vehicles and hybrid vehicles all on the same line. And all of that will be coming as soon as 2026. And the plant itself will be opening late 2025.